Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to do this morning. We give this time to you. We ask you that you would, that you would come. We thank you that you're here, but you desire to come and pour out more this morning. So I just ask you for more, even more, this morning as we speak. We love you. We desire to speak your words, not our own words. Your revelation, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so this morning, we really had it in our heart, um, Emily and I, and um, actually Emily brought this to me. She was like, I really feel like we need to talk about this. So I just want to honor her, and the minute that she said it, literally the next day, the word started burning in my heart. It was like, she's like, I feel like we need to talk about this. And I'm like, okay, that sounds good, but I didn't really have anything. And then it was like, boom, <laughs> it starts burning in my heart too. And so this morning, our goal is really to talk about why it is important to plant and belong in community. We want to cover some questions. Uh, we want to talk about, like, why, why is community and belonging important? Why is that significant? Uh, what does it look like to grow with the Lord and to grow together as a body? So this morning, the title of our message is Planting into Community. Andrew wants me to give a life update really I mean, we fast. We don't have to. So. We're going to give a real life update that doesn't have anything to do with this message. Um, since we're both up here, yeah. um, a lot of you know our story, a lot of you don't. Um, and as you um, come and hear us share, you'll hear more of our story. But um, we are coming from a place of victory today because not only am I pregnant. Woo! <laughs> come on. <laughs> We are also in the middle of the process of adopting. We feel, really felt like the Lord said um, last year that we were, um, that our family was going to grow by two in 2022. and Double portion. It's happening. So, um, yes, we're really really excited. Yeah, we're just, we're really excited, and we know a lot of you have walked with us on this journey, and I know some of you may be walking through, you may be walking through that, and so we just, I don't know, I feel like even us sharing that is the opportunity for us to come from a place of victory, not defeat. Man, um, just the story that we've had, the loss, but the Lord is releasing something, and um, we really felt from the Lord last year that we were supposed to start the adoption process. And so we started the adoption process, and at the beginning of the year, the Lord was like, you need, you need to step out in faith for this. And we did, and then we got pregnant. <laughs> it was like, wow, that's crazy. That's, that's, that's the Lord. And so it's just cool to see that happen. And so anyway, we're, we need to move on, but that's our update. Yeah. It's important that even it's important that even as pastors that we allow all of you to walk with us. It's part of what we're talking about this morning, right? Like we're all walking together. And I can look around the room and I can see people that I've been walking with you and you've been walking with me. It's beautiful. That is the beauty of community. And so one of the things that I know I say often is the local church cannot just be a weekend gathering that you attend, but it must be a place that you belong. I don't believe in attendance Christianity. I, I don't think that's what we're here for. I don't think we're here just to attend a service. I think we're here to step in, to plug in, and to find community. Um, and so I just, I think there's this aspect of community that strips away Sunday morning Christianity. Um, it, it turns the local church into a home. Our desire is not that the church is just full here on Sundays, and I love that it is. Thank you for coming. But our desire is that we have depth of community and growth. I love Sundays, but there's only so much that we can do on Sundays. 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all of the discipleship, the growth, the community, the house to house, all of that matters deeply for growth and maturity. It matters deeply. And so that's a big aspect of, yeah, what we feel like the Lord's doing, even in this house at Convergence. Yeah. During COVID, you know, it became so popular to watch church online. And there's a lot of churches that even say, you know, that's the new future, church online. And we just disagree. We think that it's so important to gather together and, um, and to do life together and to, to worship together. I mean, it truly is a picture of heaven. Like, that's what we're going to do. We're going to sit and worship and bow before the Lord together. And so I think, you know, it's as we go through today, like, there's so much that the Lord has for us together and, um, and why that's so important. Yeah, Hebrews 10, verse 25, some of you know the exact verse I'm going to quote, is not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. There's this reality that burns in my heart for gathering together. Even as we do these Jesus nights, like, we have these nights that we open up and we're like, come gather and let's go after the Lord and let's do it together in community. I love, listen, please hear our hearts on this. We love live streaming. I love live streaming. I love the fact that someone like from South Korea can watch us right now on a Sunday morning in Fort Worth, Texas. That's amazing. Media is amazing. I love it. It also can't necessarily take the place of being in the room. Being in community. And I just think that it's important. I, I remember walking. I was with Adeline, and she and I were walking, and we were just getting a popsicle, and this was when they still had a lot of the signs out from COVID and stuff. And there was a sign that I read that just struck my heart. And it was this, a part is smart. We can kind of laugh about it now, but the reality is that that stings. Because that's the narrative that was starting to be pushed, was actually not not go in plant in community it was actually community is dangerous get away from it and we end up in this moment post 2020 and 2022 now where we look at that sign and I was I'm like I want to go take that sign and throw it out and put something else in that say apart is the like together is smart We, we, we gather, it's crucial that we're together. I really believe this with all my heart. And so listen, we, we, love, we love that, but we, we really feel like, like there's a need to do life together and belong that happens when we're together as a community. And we're singing, you are enough, and we get to go after that this morning. And I just think that that's beautiful. And so I think as we approach this topic of, of community and belonging, um, I think one of the reasons that people leave church is because they feel like they don't belong. I think it's one of the reasons. It's like, I, I just, I don't belong. And that's such a lie from the enemy that the enemy tries to get in there and say, you don't belong with that community. And then he pulls you out when you need to be planted and you need to actually sink deeper. You need to sink deeper in there. And, and there could be a lot of different reasons for why, why people feel that they don't belong. You know, um, the senior pastors didn't talk to us on a Sunday morning. I, I just want you to hear my heart for a second. I love each and every one of you. And unfortunately, I cannot talk to all of you on a Sunday. I wish I could. I'd be here all afternoon. And I just think that there's this thing, like, we empower a team here at Convergence that's really, really important. Like, Emily and I, we would love, we would love to do, we do as much as we can, and we would love to continue to do as, like, more. 
but we can't do everything. That's why we have Jason and Kim. It's why we have my parents, our staff, our microchurch pastors here. It's why we have the people that we've empowered in this environment is because there's pastoring happening that is outside of my realm that I love because I can't be involved in everything. And that's beautiful because that's community. That's community. We have microchurch pastors that are pastoring things that Emily and I don't even know about. And that's amazing and beautiful. And so we empower a team here. And then we also do our best, of course, to meet with people and to connect as much as possible. Um, But there's just something important about that. Like, there's a lot of opportunities to plug in here. And I think one of the things that happens is that Sometimes people leave with a feeling like they didn't belong. And sometimes that can be true. We need to do more to provide that atmosphere sometimes. But sometimes there's the other side of it where I want to belong, but I'm unwilling to plant. I really want community, but I'm unwilling to go. I'm unwilling to plant. I'm unwilling to step in. And my, my pastoral loving heart this morning wants to just tell you that if that's you, if you're like, I really want to belong, but, but you're, you're kind of like, I don't feel it, but you haven't planted, my encouragement by the end of this message is that you plant. And so we're going to transition here into why is community important? So from the beginning, God created us for community. I'm going to go through a lot of scripture, um, but so just be patient with me. Some things will I'll tell you to turn to, but um, in Genesis 2.18, God says, it's not good for man to be alone. We were created to need one another. Um, the next portion of scripture that we're going to read through, we're going to stick in for a little bit, is 1 Corinthians 12. So if you want to turn to 1 Corinthians 12, you can. It's one of my favorite passages of scripture, and I love how Paul is talking to us about the body of Christ and how we all make up different parts, and we each serve a purpose, and we're designed to work together. We're designed to remind each other of, you know, what purpose we have and who the Lord says that we are. Um, So I'm going to start in verse 12. For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, and so is Christ. I'm going to go to verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason and any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body. It is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members but one body. And then I'm going to skip to verse 26. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members honor, all the members rejoice with it. You want to belong somewhere so that not only you can build relationships and plant, but you can also be there for each other and others can be there for you. Some of us are ears, and some of us are eyes, and some of us are feet, and all the things. But we're supposed to remind each other of whose we are. Like, there are times where, I'll give one example, where right after our son Judah died, and I came to church, and um, Paige was singing, you are faithful, and I just couldn't say that. And um, I remember Kim Audi just I just sobbed in her arms, and she just said, hey, you can't say it, but I'm going to just speak it over you. And so she just sang it over me, and she said, I'm going to sing it until you can say it. And um, that's what we're supposed to do. Like, we're supposed to live life together and to, to remind each other. Like, if I can't say that Jesus is faithful, someone else can, and so they can say it over me. And in turn, I'm, 
I can do that for other people too. And so, and not only that, but we're supposed to laugh and to cry together. We're supposed to rejoice and to mourn together. Like, that's why the Lord created us. Like, we need each other. Um, Another story is um, the church has just, it's really marked me, like, for community in my life. And um, my dad died when I was young, and um, the church just really showed up for me, for us and our family. And um, we had a sweet, we, my mom juiced carrot juice every morning. And um, after my dad died, my, our sweet neighbor from church, she brought over carrot juice every morning. Um, she knew that my mom couldn't do it. And, um, and so like, as a kid, as an eight year old, like I saw men from church, like take time to, they would pick a week and, um, you know, they would mow the grass and do our yard and, you know, organize the garage and things like that. We had women that took different weeks to clean our house and our church. Like that is the body of Christ. Like not only like, you know, just being there in times of trouble, but also celebrating and, and remind, you know, in, you know, this is a little bit later, but, you know, the Lord wants us to be together and the enemy really wants to isolate us. And so, you know, Eve sinned when she was alone. And so the enemy really, really wants us to be alone. And so he can get in our head, he can get in our heart, he can do all the things when we're alone. But what is beautiful about the body of Christ is accountability and going, no, 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 like, that's not who the Lord is. That's not who the Lord says that you are. Um, And just reminding each other of, of who we are. That's so good. So the people you are around and the soil of community that you plant in is important. And so I just want to quickly just kind of build a little bit of a foundation for that from Matthew 13. This is when it says Jesus teaches in parables. So this is kind of the beginning where we we get a lot of parables here starting in Matthew 13. And this is the parable of the different soils. And so here we have... Verse 3, and he told them many things in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on the rocky places where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up immediately because they had no depth of soil. But after the sun rose, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Verse 7. Others fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. But others fell on the good soil and yielded a crop, some 100, some 60, and some 30 times as much. And then Jesus later on, of course, the disciples are like, as they often were, what in the world are you talking about, Jesus? And so Jesus explains it, and when he explains it, he's specifically talking about the word. Verse 19 says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. And so that's the road, right? And when I think about this, I think of this reality of if I'm throwing seed beside the road, is it ever going to spring anything up? Probably not, right? Because it's not actually planted. It's just thrown, scattered. And then there's the rocky place, which is what my backyard in Fort Worth, Texas looks like. <laughs> if I dig three, three inches into the ground, I'm psh, running into a stone. That's not a good environment for growth either. If I try to plant in rocky, that root, that foundation is only going to be able to go so deep. And it springs up quickly, which is that reality of like, we suddenly see growth, but the growth isn't sustainable because there's no depth, right? And then we have the thorns. How many have been struck by thorns, right? You get hung up on something. If you're running in the forest and you just happen to stumble upon thorns, it, it's, it makes you stumble. You kind of, 
it, it kind of chokes you for a second, and then you have to get back up and keep going. And so the thorns is an example of, it's an example of seeds that are planted in bad soil. There's nothing about that that's good. It's thorns. And then we have good soil, right? Amen. We all want to be planted in good soil. Your foundation is secure. Your focus is remaining tethered to the Lord, and the growth opportunity is exponential because of the environment that the seed is planted into. Good soil has the right ingredients for growth. It's got everything that you need, and then as you water that, it begins to grow, and it springs up, and it lasts because the roots were able to dig down deep. There's depth. Good soil produces depth. And so when you plant and you remain in good soil, then there's this aspect where Jesus in John 15, he's talking to the disciples, and he's talking about remaining in him. And he actually says this. I want to read this real quick. He says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. How many gardeners do we have in the room? Okay, there's a few of you, right? How many of you understand the pruning process? See, I didn't understand this, and I started planting things, and things started dying. And then I started doing some research. And the research told me, you got to prune. And I was like, oh, I understand. Why is that important, though? Why is all this important? So the soil that you plant in matters. If I plant in rocky soil, I'm not going to get the sustainable growth. I'm not going to find that depth that I'm longing for. If I just hold on to my seed and I don't plant at all, I'm also not going to get growth. Because there's not going to be anything planted in the ground giving me an opportunity to see something spring up. The other thing that not planting prevents you from is not planting prevents you from the pruning process. So things that are planted get pruned. Some of you, are, you're, you're slightly frowning, but you need to get happy. <laughs> Pruning is one of the best things. It's the only way that you are going to grow to the extent that the Lord desires of you is he prunes. I, had a, I remember one, a pastor, Michael Miller, was talking about it as heaven shears. Right? The Lord comes in, and it's actually his grace over your life that he prunes you. Because that pruning, and he doesn't just prune the dead things. Thank you, Jesus, that you do prune the dead things. But sometimes there's that branch that looks good to you, and the Lord's like, and you're like, wait a second, what, what, what? And the Lord's like, I actually have something better. And he does the pruning. And some of us in this room, we actually dislike the pruning process so much that we actually step back and we actually don't lean in and we prevent the Lord from continuing to prune and we actually miss it. And the Lord wants to go, hey, I'm just pruning you. It's going to be okay. Just stay planted. Stay planted. If that seed stays planted and you prune that thing, By the next spring, it's going to grow usually even two to three times higher, and it's going to bloom more than it did previously. Why? Because you pruned it. So Jesus, in a very loving way, is saying, hey, this is for your benefit so that you can be pruned so that you can bear more fruit, fruit that remains. And so good things must be pruned to produce better fruit better things and I just think that that's really important like the pruning process is really important to our growth yeah the community that we're planted into matters and the soil that we plant ourselves into matters 
Um, another aspect of community is um, iron sharpens iron. Um, and so one person sharpens another. We're there to remind each other whose we are. We are to worship together in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. And in Titus 2, it talks about all the multi-generational and how that's really important too. We are supposed to be multi-generational, learning from one another and encouraging each other. As you can see, God has a really big theme throughout the Bible. Like he really wants us to do life together um, and build community together and to plant. Um, community encourage you, encourages you either towards Jesus or away from him. That's really good. Yeah, I, I just, like, the growth, the growth that we desire is found in planting. Iron sharpens iron. Every joint supplies. We come together, and we see that, that growth. But part of the thing that happens, though, is if you don't plant, you, you, don't, you don't always get that. And so fruit comes from planting. And so community, this is the thing that matters. One thing about good soil is this. Community, good soil community will encourage you towards Jesus. Bad soil community will encourage you away from Jesus. And your community either pulls you towards him or it pulls you away from him. And I, I don't want to take too much time, and please derail me if, we, if I get too caught up in this, because I could preach an entire message on this. Um, Matthew 25, the parable of the ten virgins has just been, like, ringing in my heart for the last two weeks. And most of you know, you, you're probably aware of the story, but I'm going to read it real quick. Then the kingdom of heaven, this is Matthew 25, verse 1 will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the prudent, which is another word for wise, took oil in flasks along with their lamps. Now, while the bridegroom was delaying, verse 5, they got drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight, there was a loud shout saying, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish ones said to the prudent, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the prudent answered, No, there will not be enough for us, and you too go instead to the dealers and buy some for yourself. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. It's a very sobering passage. And the point that he's making is to be ready. But as I read this this past week, I had this revelation hit me of like, why was there five foolish and five prudent? It's a real even number, right? It's like five and five. And I was asking the Lord about that, and all of a sudden, I had this revelation of, like, what if an aspect of that that maybe we could see in this parable is actually about community? What if there were, f what if one of the virgins was like, hey, I really feel like we need to tend to our oil. We need to go make sure that we have enough oil. And they, they drew these other three over here, and so these five were over here, and then we had another one over here that was kind of like, Psh. I got plenty in my lamp. I don't need any more oil. And they drew four over here. And there's actually an aspect of community because, listen, community either, either charges you to find more oil or it says you don't actually need any more oil. Your, your life is okay. And oil, biblically, we know represents a lot of things. It represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Kings were anointed with oil when they became king so that it was the sign of like you're anointed to lead under God. And so there's this concept of like oil, 
all throughout the Bible, oil is costly. If you look back in those days, it was one of the most costly things was oil. And so now you have these, these five virgins that are like, we're willing to go out and we're willing to do whatever we have to do to find oil and encourage each other to find oil. And those were the ones that were wise. And so I just, I felt like there was this reality of like community that encourages you to go find oil. Oil represents intimacy. It represents surrender before the Lord. It's costly. It's something that you don't just get just by staying and, and just by hovering. It's something that you go after. I go after him. I surrender to him. I get deep with intimacy. I plant in something, and I go after oil. Because at the end of the day, when the bridegroom comes, it's the oil that's attractive. It's not my house, it's not my car, it's not how much money I have in the bank that's attractive, it's the oil that's on my life. It's the time that I've invested with the Lord, it's my surrender before him, it's the posture of my heart in community saying, hey, let's go after more oil until he comes. But there's this reality where we can be Foolishness attracts foolishness, but wisdom attracts wisdom. I can be content. That word lamp in the Greek means torch. And so you can picture these virgins, they're walking with the torches. And you have to have oil on the torch to keep it lit. How is this a picture of community? I remember back in high school... I had this decision that I had to make because I had, there was a group of friends that I had that I love, but they, they were inviting me constantly, hey, let's go party, you know, let's go hit up a bar and, and, and do these different things. And, and I, I had that choice that I was like, I could be the cool person and go with them. And it was a hard choice for me because it was one of those things where everybody was going except me. I was the one person that didn't. And I look back because the choice that I made was I told them over and over and over again, no, so many times that it became a joke. It was a running joke. Oh, Andrew's just going to say no. Why are we even asking him? What's great about that is what they didn't know is that my no was attractive to them. Why is this one person willing to stand? Why are they standing? There's something attractive about you standing for your values. It's not unattractive. It's attractive. And there's something that happened. I look back on that moment, and I'm like, Lord, thank you, Jesus, because I can see the fruit of my life from that moment, my yes to saying no to them, my yes to my values and saying, I just, I don't want to get wrapped up in that, ended up propelling me to where I am today because there's fruit found in that. There's fruit found in it. What am I saying? Put it all together. Find yourself a community that pushes you to find more oil, to go after oil, to go after intimacy. In the end days, it's not going to be about, hey, look, look at all the cool stuff that we did and the cool lights and the, it's going to be about oil. What's attractive when you're in a room with someone? Oh, I'm getting really fired up. Help me, Lord. When you're in a room with someone that has oil, you know they have oil. Because you can feel it. When you get in an environment and you're like, I want what that person carries, what you're after is the oil because the oil is attractive. The oil is what's drawing people to the Lord. It's his presence. It's oil. It's intimacy. It's surrender. But listen, you can be planted in bad soil. You need to be planted in good soil, people around you that pull you out and say, I need you to come over here because this is where the oil is. Five virgins found that. Five were not 
ready. And when there's delay, delay is not a moment to sit back and isolate. Delay is the time to press in deeper and go after more oil. What are we in right now? Maybe we're in a season of delay where the Lord, has, he hasn't come yet. We don't sit back and we go, okay, I'm just going to wait. Ah, all right, Jesus, whenever you're ready. No, we're going to say, let's go on Sundays. Let's gather on a Friday night for no other reason than Jesus. Let's disciple one another. Let's meet at someone's home and read this and worship him. Let's go after oil while we're in a season of delay because it's not passively waiting. It's actively waiting for the Lord because that is what draws him near is the oil. Amen. Your yes determines your no. My biggest encouragement for a community is have a giant yes. Because your giant yes for the Lord and for oil and for intimacy will determine your no. Because everything else becomes less attractive. <laughs> when you've tasted and you've seen, everything else is less attractive. Oh man, do you got anything before we attempt to land this plane somehow? My yes to standing on my values determined my no for a crowd that I knew had the potential to pull me away. And I want to say this too, and that is that sometimes there's this place too in healthy community when we plant in good soil and then things begin to grow, things begin to grow that we're like, what is growing? Is that good? Right? Because good community actually draws out things that need to leave. And so there's this aspect of good community where like when you're planted and when you're in that place and people are encouraging you for the Lord, things begin to come to the surface that need to be dealt with. And I want to encourage some of you, some of you, you may be in this room and you're like, I feel like I'm planted in good soil, but my goodness, what is all of this junk coming out? It's the Lord. Stuff gets pulled to the surface, and then that community, that foundation, that depth actually allows that stuff to be dealt with. It actually allows that addiction to leave. It actually allows that place, that, that, that hurt to go because you're planted in good soil. And so some of you, you might be like, man, why is it that I finally got in good community, and yet everything in my life looks like I'm, like it's a mess? And I just want to encourage you, maybe you're in the pruning process. He's taking heaven's shears and he's like, shh. So my encouragement is stay in that community. Don't run. The temptation of the enemy is when things get messy to run away from the mess, not to lean into the mess and say, no, I'm going in with the Lord. I'm going in with community. I'm willing to stand with those around me. Every joint supplies. And as I lean into that mess, the mess can be dealt with. If I run away from that mess, I'm going to carry the mess over there and 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 over there. And then I'm going to wonder what why there's churches that don't work for me. I'm going to wonder why community is hard for me. Because you need to lean into it in order to see it out. There's so many things. It's this practical principle from the Lord. I am talking way too much. There's so many things. It's this practical principle for the Lord where sometimes the Lord doesn't just snatch you out. You have to go through. You go through. And it's in the seasons of the through that you need people with you that encourage you to find oil. Go after oil. And when you find communities like that, the mess comes out. The conviction of the Holy Spirit comes. And you're like, here's this thing that I don't really want to deal with. And the Lord's like, yes, it's finally out. Now let's get rid of it in community. And let's go after oil. Well, because you're in a safe place. It's like the grace of the Lord because you got to a safe place to deal with it. Wow. Yeah. 
Do you want to hit this next thing, or you want me to? I'm going to let you, then I'll take the next. Okay. And so part, part of this, too, is we, we believe, and I'm not just saying this. Listen, I've grown up in the church my whole life. I'm a pastor's kid. I've seen it all in church. The beautiful and the not so beautiful. There's this popular saying, right? People hurt people. And the reality of that is understanding that it's hurt people hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. That's it. Thank you. Hurt people hurt people. It's important. And there's this reality that when you're in church, sometimes hurts happen because we come in potentially in a broken place, and the Lord wants to heal that place. Um, and so I, I think one of the things that's really important is that, like, finding a community in a church, a place that you can plant. And, of course, if you're here, I believe with all my heart that this is good soil. I've seen the fruit of it in my own life. And as a pastor's kid, I've had people say some really bad things behind my back. I've had to process through that, but I dug in with the community. I stayed in the church when I could have run. And I, I just think there's this element where I just, I think that part of what we're talking about, about being planted too, is about really rooting yourself into a church community and a church family. And I just want to give you an invitation this morning. If you're here and you're kind of like, I don't really know if this is my home or not, I just want to encourage you, this is a great place to be. It's a great home to have. It's good soil. I believe it with all my heart. And I'm not just saying that because I'm biased. I could point to people around the room that I have seen things in their life happen and shift because they were planted in community. Yeah. And so I, I just, I think this thing that's important too, is, and we talk about this and sometimes it gets a bad rap, and that is becoming a member of a church. Sometimes this conversation is like, oh, we're having the membership conversation. And sometimes membership... Membership isn't about perks. It's not about, oh, you know, there's more perks over there than there's more. It's about a community that you can belong to, okay? Yeah. That's what it's about. And it, it's about planting after, going after a common vision, doing it with people. And so there's something that happens when you plant. There's, there's covering. There's people around you. But the, there's something important when, if you're, when, you become, when you take that step, what you're saying is, is I'm willing to put my seed in this soil. Come what may, pruning, whatever it looks like, I'm willing to plant. And so we just want to encourage you, like, we, we really believe, we believe in this body, we believe in this place, and we just wanted to invite those that maybe if you want to become a member, you're like, I'm looking for a community, I want to invite you out on the 20th to discover, and it's an opportunity to put that seed in the ground and to plant, which is really important, and listen, we're all battling together, we're going after we're going after something together. I, I don't, churches aren't supposed to be cruise ships. They're supposed to be battleships. Cruises are fun. And church is fun. Don't, let, right? Church is fun. I'm not trying to say it's not fun. What I'm trying to say is, is we're not just in it for the, we're not in it for the party. We're not in it for the hype. We're not in it because it looks cool. We're in it because we're battling together. We're going after something together. I would much rather in seasons of difficulty get on a battleship than I would a cruise ship. Because if we're going to war, I want to go to war 
together against the battles of, against the enemy, against the spiritual forces of darkness to see victory happen, to see things dismantled. And so I'm going to hop on that battleship that's convergence, and we're going to run after encountering Jesus and seeing a city transformed. We don't care about the hype. We don't care about being a cool church. We care about being a battleship church that charges after the enemy and sees victory happen. And I'm so thankful that Sean Graves is manning the guns. Come on, and we're, we're going in this battleship. And Sean Graves is on the guns, and we've got co-pilots, and we're functioning together because a battleship needs every person in this room to run after their calling, to go after their destiny. And together, we are moving in the direction that the enemy cannot stop. I'm sorry, I got, I came in really fired up this morning. Please, please take the rest. (laughs) We're going to land the plane. Yeah. Um, The other aspect of just planting and church membership is serving and serving one another. As we are being poured into, we're also pouring out. And so not only, you know, it may, sometimes it's not, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But it's actually really good. Like, it's really good to serve. It's really on the Lord's heart. It's, um, it's how also you can get to know each other. Like, you can get to know each other by doing the coffee bar together or by serving in kids together or doing media together. Or there's so many different ways that, that we can get to know each other, not only through serving but micro church and doing um, everyday life together. Um, and then another really important aspect of church membership and a part of being in community and the body together is, is giving. And it really is important um, to the Lord's heart. It's tithing is not just, you know, oh, I don't want to, you know, but it's, it's really is what the Lord wants. And um, I feel like, you know, part of community is shifting the mindset of um, that it is important to to serve and give. And instead of um, I have to serve or give my tithe, it's really that I get to. Um, and there's a there's a right order that comes with tithing, and financial order comes with tithe. Um, I'm gonna end with this. Um, I, I love Acts 4 and how they're sharing among believers and they're doing life together. And um, so in 30, 432. And the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. And not one of them claimed that anything belonged to him was his own. But all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And abundant grace was upon them all. For there was not a needy person among them. For all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales. Like, that is church. <laughs> that is just doing life together. Um, and so Andrew's going to pray in a second, but just bringing it all back and all together is we love you. We love this house. Um, we want you to plant and to plug in here. Um, we want to continue to grow and build community. Um, and we think that it is really important. Um, so if this is your first Sunday, welcome. Um, but if you've been here for a while, um, we just invite you to discover on November 20th so that, um, you can hear more of our heart and more of our values and, um, yeah, we just, we love you guys. Jump on the battleship. We're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. I'm, I'm ready. And I'm just, I, I'm so, we also just wanted to say too, like, we're so grateful for this community. We're honored, like, it is a complete honor that we even get the opportunity to sit up here as your pastors this morning. I am so honored by that. I'm so grateful. And there's no other place that I'd rather be than right here. Locking arms together with all of us as we go after the Lord together. It's beautiful. It's a deep honor in our heart that we get the opportunity to steward this and what the Lord is doing. 
It's not something that we take lightly. It's a privilege. It's a joy to be with you all this morning. It's a joy if you're watching online. It's a joy that you're with us. Yeah, so let's just pray real quick. Lord, we thank you for this community. We thank you. We just thank you for good soil. We thank you for people to my left and to my right that we can lock arms with and go together that we can stand together, that we can fight together, that we can cry together, that we can, we can encourage one another while it is still day, Lord, that we can continue to press in for the one thing, which is the oil, it's the intimacy of your presence. That is the one thing, Lord, and as a community, we thank you, we just Lord, we just thank you for the privilege to gather in your name. We thank you for the privilege to gather together as a body and to be the body to each other. We thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I, I, I even ask you that you would help us, that you would encourage those that maybe they're Maybe they're in a season of pruning, and they're like, Lord, why is this mess coming up? I ask you for grace, for even grace for us to be able to lock arms and to say, no, we're going to get you through this because the Lord wants to get you through. We thank you for the grace that's on community, for the fact that every joint supplies and every joint supplies as part of the body with the head, which is Christ leading us. We thank you that this church is led by you, Jesus. This is your house. This is your people. And we just thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to plant to plant, and Lord, we even, we even are willing this morning to pray really dangerously scary prayers like, Lord, would you prune us so that we can grow? Would you take us deeper so that the foundation can be so strong that when, we, when that root, when that plant begins to grow and bloom, that it can grow, it can multiply exponentially because you are with us and you're pruning in order for there to be greater growth. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this place. Thank you for community. For the privilege to be together. In Jesus' name. Well, hey, thank you guys. Um, I don't really have anything else to say, except that we love you, yeah. <laughs>